12 years ago now, uh, I met Grace Halloran at a conference in Minnesota that uh, was a conference on uh, bioelectrical medicine with a doctor, uh, Nordenstrom. Uh, I don't know whether people know Nordenstrom's work or not. I, I found his work, his work in this country was originally announced in the Gray Journal of Radiology, and that's my board certification is as a radiologist. And so uh, he was a radiologist, a man after my own heart. And uh, it was a very odd bit of uh, information to, to find in a radiology journal because he was talking about biological closed electrical circuits. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those later. But that was, uh, that was my introduction to Nordenstrom. And when I was in... Uh, before I even went to medical school, I had found an article and I'd torn it out and carried it around with me for years, which was about uh, the work of an orthopedic surgeon, Becker. Uh, and I'll be talking a little bit about his work, Robert Becker, and he still has a book in print called The Body Electric. So we'll go to that. But this, uh, I met Grace and I had left the hospital-based practice of medicine that I was in. And I had sort of told myself, I, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And I had made a promise to myself that if something fell at my feet, I was not going to just step over it. I was going to try and stay awake enough that when things presented themselves to me, um, I, would, I would pay attention to them. And so I went to a conference, and Grace was there, and I had uh, gone there thinking that I was going to be learning about alternative treatments for cancer. Because there are a lot of things that are done with bioelectric medicine, most of it in Germany and China now, that are... Uh, using some of the work that was begun by Nordenstrom uh, treating cancers with high voltages, platinum electrodes, a lot of interesting therapies. And I was an interventional radiologist, and it seemed like, well, this would be a way that I could combine those two things. But there were several papers presented on treatment of eye disease. And so Grace's was, the, was one of them, and she was talking about a series of patients she'd done, uh, about 30 patients. And in fact, there is a correction on page 8 of the handout where it talks about her uh, second study uh, I neglected to mention that there were, uh, let's see, there were 18 patients in that study with RP. I just mentioned the patients with macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, and AIDS-related CMV. But there were also 18 patients with RP. So uh, I met Grace, and Grace was reporting on results in treating these chronic degenerative retinal diseases where people were actually getting better. And this was very contrary to everything I'd been taught in medical school. These diseases were never supposed to get better. And there was also a paper there uh, by uh, an optometrist from South Dakota and another doctor uh, from the Midwest. And they were both reporting. And they had learned these techniques. They had learned them from Grace, taken them back. So here were three independent people who had taken these techniques, gone out, practiced them, and were getting very similar results. And I had no thought that I was going to be doing this. That wasn't, I, I hadn't gone to this conference to learn to treat eye disease. And I'm not an ophthalmologist. And I got back to... Uh, California, where I lived, and got a call about the day after I got back from the man who was the head of the Macular Degeneration Foundation. And he said, I heard you were at this conference. And I go, well, yes, I was at this conference. He goes, well, what did you think? And I said, well, there were three presentations, and they were all reporting on a disease that I had been taught was completely hopeless, never got better. And uh, they were showing about 80% of the people they treated showing improvement and actually getting vision back. And uh, he said, well, that's what I've heard. Would you treat me? Because he had macular degeneration. And so I said, well, okay, and I got hold of the equipment that was needed and started treating him. And he went from walking around with a white cane to being about 20 over 70. And the only reason that we couldn't get him any better than that is that he had had a very unfortunate run-in with a bad doctor. He'd had both cataracts replaced, both lenses had slipped, and his uh, vision was skewed, and uh, 20 over 70 was the best he was ever going to be. Um, because of that. And that doctor actually was kind of run out of town on a rail. He lost to one of the few people in California to ever lose their license for doing something wrong. Um, but I, that began then a whole slew of work with eye disease um, because obviously uh, the man who I treated knew a lot of people with macular degeneration and I started getting a lot of calls. Uh, Grace Halloran lived right across the bay from me. I was in the uh, Palo Alto area. She was across the bay in San Leandro. And eventually we started collaborating. We started doing workshops together. And uh, eventually uh, did all of the work with this together. She died in 2005, um, unfortunately.